When I say Minecraft world record, what do you usually think of? Maybe it's beating the Ender Dragon as fast as possible, or having the most wins at the top of a leaderboard. Either way, I can confidently say you definitely didn't think of redstone. So, what is a redstone world record? Well, the title is most commonly given to a build that does a task in the smallest size. For example, this is the smallest combination lock in Minecraft, with many redstoners thinking it cannot get smaller. But to prove them wrong, I'm giving out $1,000 to the person that can beat it. Combination locks have existed in dozens of different forms for as long as redstone has been around, but we're talking specifically about sequential designs. As opposed to most versions, button locks have one thing that set them apart, order sensitivity, meaning that you have to put in the right numbers and put them in the correct order, which brings up a lot of questions. How do I make each button a different number? How do I make the machine remember an order? How do I make certain buttons correct? Well, let's start with the last one. Forget about buttons and order and let's start with levers. If we had five levers on a wall, inputs one through five, how can we make it so all of them have to be powered for a lamp to turn on? Well, we can make what is known as an AND gate, inverting every single input with a redstone torch and have them all connected and inverted once again. But let's say you only wanted every other lever to be the correct ones. Well, just uninvert the signal from the incorrect ones with repeaters. Now only three levers are required to turn the lamp on. And if we try using all of them like our first attempt, then the lamp will turn off. This is as basic as locks can get, and you can already build tons of variations using this very concept. A color lock? Use an AND gate. Item frames? Use an AND gate. Most combo locks just need to know which values are correct and incorrect and compare them all with one big circuit. But in the real world, passcodes, keyboards, credit card pins, whatever, they all use order sensitivity and button. So we have to change the way we approach making a button-based lock with redstone. Rather than the inputs themselves keeping a constant signal, we need a circuit to do that with memory with latches. A single latch can store a bit of information, so redstoners ask the question, what if we had more latches? That way, the next latch is dependent on whether the previous latch had been activated. The signal can only go all the way through if the latches were activated in order. For around a year, this is what everyone rolled with. It was simple, it was customizable, and it had one big flaw. Just a minute ago, we asked three questions about locks, but we haven't really gotten answer to the first one. Sure, lever locks, you can easily make different inputs correct and incorrect, and this latch system gives you a way to add a sequence, but there's one part I left out when talking about the ladder, and it requires a little bit of rewording of this first question question. How do we wire the buttons? This sequential latch array system, well, it gets a little messy. Some insane spaghetti wiring is needed just to connect each button to each latch, and there's literally infinite ways you can do that, and it's just annoying to figure out. What we need is a standard, a circuit that can take any button panel and decode it into certain numbers. It would be a revolution in simplifying sequential button locks, and on October 11th, 2011, a player by the name of CNB Minecraft did just that. The CNB lock is not the first. What? Yeah, this is the first of many surprises that the video will throw at you. CMB may have popularized the decoder approach, but it was actually first thought up almost seven months prior, just three weeks after Redstone Repeaters came out, by a player fittingly named Minecraft Ad. And yes, he actually has that handle on YouTube, if you could believe that. March 13th, 2011, he would upload his first prototype, and he would quickly refine it to just this in 10 days. But if you pay close attention, you might realize that, wait, isn't that just CNB Minecraft's design? seven months before CNB Minecraft's design? Wait a minute, did CNB Minecraft not design his lock? Yes, CNB Minecraft did not design the CNB lock. So let's give it a broader name, the decoder lock. Every button goes into this decoder circuit. One axis is how many inputs you have hooked up and the other is how many digits you have. Each digit is represented by a trench and they all have an elevated piece of redstone representing the correct digits in the passcode. And if you remember the sequential latch array from earlier, well, now it's been compared. So with each correct number going into this array, the lock can now recognize the order of the buttons pressed. But this design introduced another idea that would appear in all future combo locks, a reset line. Above the redstone trenches, every other space is occupied by a torch, and these are the incorrect numbers. Every incorrect number toggles the latch that it's attached to, so it resets the lock when the code is wrong. Except when it doesn't. Surprise number two, the most popular combo lock on YouTube at the time never fully worked. Aside from the obvious bugs, these designs hated repeating numbers, with a lot of problems with skipping through latches and not resetting properly. Despite that, this approach was a smash hit among the Redstone community. Dozens of players made their own designs using different button panel variations, latch arrays, but one thing stayed the same, the decoder. Nothing could stop it unless Mojang completely revamped Redstone with brand new Redstone components. And well, it's a good thing that Mojang completely revamped Redstone with brand new Redstone components. 1.5 is here and it changed everything. The thing that matters most for us, though, is the comparator. Gone are the days of giant, clunky, annoying 
annoying binary systems, and here are the days of cramming eight times the information in a single block. With the introduction of the comparator, encoding things using redstone signal strength was now feasible in a small area, and it wouldn't be long until Mizuma Games published the very first signal strength based combo lock. The thing that I was able to make different, we're trying to recognize the digits. I realized that uh, I didn't need to use the full range of signal strength. Once I had that, then I realized that I could just uh, compute the difference uh, between them, and this is how everything happened. These little circuits would only give out power when it received a certain signal strength, and because of that, panels went from separate lines for every button to a single redstone line for every button. By the end of the year, we got our very first order-sensitive design by Sharir1701, which, surprise number three, was one of the original Psycraft members. Yeah, that blew my mind a little too. But even throughout 1.5, the binary-based decoder lock was still the most popular, with its approach now attached to CMB instead of the true inventor Minecraft added. Some other signal strength based designs were still popping up, with Deco creating the smallest combo lock at the time using a vertical layout instead of horizontal. The reason I did this is for sure just the space behind the wall I think of as more precious than the space underneath the floor, right? So we have these comparator RS neural latches. So this one is on now, and that means that now it allows the next one to be unlocked as well, right? Others use the flexibility of signal strength to add extra features like changing the password with the same interface or using multiple combinations to activate different things. Nothing really groundbreaking was being published though, since at this point we're in 2018, the absolute peak of Minecraft's deadness. And it would seem that the comparator would be the last breakthrough that we would ever see. And then I broke the record myself. Oh my oh, god, that's dude! That's it. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. I have found a video by a person called Crafty Masterman who has absolutely killed it. I decided to have a go at making a combination lock because, well, I actually forgot and why. And I did what every great redstoner does. Steel. This was a design by Melon BP and Rudon, an impressively tiny build that didn't work. I'm sorry, it just it just didn't work. But that didn't matter though. What I soon realized is that this contained the next big breakthrough in combo lock technology. Locked repeaters. Why have entire latch circuits when you can have them in just three blocks? And combining that with Mezuma's digit recognizer idea, Sacred Redstone and I made the smallest combination lock in Minecraft. So how does it work? This latch on the blue line is controlled by three different elements of the lock. The digit recognizer, the previous latch, and this redstone torch which I'm calling the gate. When the correct signal strength goes through, this comparator gets unlocked, letting whatever signal in from the previous latch get to the other side. At the same time, the gate unlocks the repeater in front of it, meaning that when the buttons turn off, the signal will get locked in place, ready for the next number. If an input is wrong, the gates being unlocked would make the signal disappear since it doesn't go past the comparator. And if you were watching my channel around 2020, then you would know what happens next, but for the people that are new, this thing doubled my sub count. The video was posted in the middle of June, and just a few months later it would get featured in one of Mumbo's Hermitcraft episodes. And for almost three years it held the world record, and it seemed that it would stay that way forever. The lock was already completely flat, with every single block in its area being used. The only thing that could change that would be if Mojang added a block that had some very specific properties that would be incredibly useful for this specific scenario. And while it's a good thing that Mojang added a block that had very specific properties that would be- Everything would change in 2023, and it's all Mumbo's fault. In January, he would upload a video of himself making a decoder-based combination lock for the first time in 2023. Out of curiosity, I DM'd him asking for the download to experiment on it myself, and came across surprise number four, which isn't really a surprise if you paid attention to the sentence before, it was broken. And it's for the exact same reason as all the old decoder locks, repeat numbers. And you wanna know the best part? You wanna know why these locks didn't work with repeat numbers? It's because all the latch arrays were always built backwards. Anyway, Mumbo making this video made me revisit my lock to see if I could compact it one last time. So I set up a stream, got together with Purple and Sacred, and we got to work. <laughs> He heard himself in his confusion. Crazy. Oh my That's god. It. Dude. That's it. Oh, That's it. That's it. I can't believe it. The answer is the jukebox. We had done it. Jukeboxes. It was so obvious. Jukeboxes were the answer. With properties of both containers and target blocks, we shaved four blocks off the volume of the previous record, and it now stood at 36 blocks per digit. It was unbeatable, we all thought. I mean, no one even came close to beating the record before, and now we had it two times in a row. Is, is your model with the jukebox is your latest model because I think that I might have one that was more compact. GG, I love your channel. Huh. Surprise number five.
he was right. Even though we were so confident that our lock wouldn't be beaten in years, it wasn't impossible. The previous build used up every single block in its volume, but this one missed a block in its volume for every single digit. Not to mention that this layer of repeaters kept teasing us. It looked so easy to get rid of. So when a player by the name of RPZ2 underscore 23 finally got rid of it, I was shocked at how simple it was. All right, so why do we even need these repeaters in the first place? Well, our latch system looked like this, a pattern of comparators of subtract mode and locked repeaters. The problem with that is that we need to subtract the same amount from the side of the comparators as the back. RP solution to this, hoppers. Instead of having a second set of repeaters per digit, RP used this dropper hopper setup, which did the exact same thing as a repeater, but at signal strength one, meaning they could move the entire latch line over by a block, shaving a whole six blocks from our design at a clean 30 blocks per digit. Digit. The only way a smaller lock could be made is if a Minecraft YouTuber with a sizable influence on the Redstone community made a video announcing a $1,000 bounty if someone breaks the record. And while it's a good thing you guys are still watching that, after all that, if you still think you can break the world record, well, good luck to you, but... Here are a few rules. You can use whatever encoding method you want. It can be binary, signal strength, entities, items, etc. But it has to have at least nine buttons. It can work with more buttons or it can work with less buttons. But I need a version with a nine button panel. Rule number two, your lock has to be infinitely expandable. It should be able to work with three digits or 300. And of course, it has to have order sensitivity like the rest of the locks we've been shown. It's also gotta work with any type of combination, including repeat numbers and have a constant reset time. I don't wanna be waiting hours for the lock to reset just because it has 100 digits. It should take the same amount to reset if it had one digit or 100. Rule number three or four. I'm kind of losing count at this point. The password should be easy to customize. For example, this is the same lock with two different combinations. It looks the exact same. The last feature you need is the Redstone Can't Link Decodology, which is a word I just made up. Basically, your lock shouldn't have any sound or visual cues to what your combination might be. If you do have sounds like pistons or dropper clicking, they better be the same every single time. And that's it for functionality. In terms of version, it can either work in the latest Java or Bedrock Edition or both. And it has to be buildable in survival. Yeah, I know these are a lot of instructions, but I really don't want to be cheesed out of $1,000, okay? That's a lot of money. Okay, so you made this lock now, but how do you make me see it? You need to post it on YouTube and put this hashtag, hashtag CraftyLockWR in the description. That way, it's going to be easy for me to find it. And number two, I need to be able to replicate it. You can either do that by making your video a tutorial or providing me with a world download. And yeah, that's all the rules. So to anyone competing, good luck and let the greatest redstone competition begin.